that makes me happy is the fact that I have been grafted into the Lord's army and the Lord has not just called me into the army without any tools, without any weapons, without any ammunition to fight the battles of life. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to somebody here? Mm -hmm. When you are en enlisted into the army of United Kingdom, they provide you with some gadgets, some equipment that you can use to fight the battles of life. Yes. They train you mm. so that you can be able to fight and come back to the enemy. Yes. In the same way, as children of God, as those of us that have been washed by the blood and called into the kingdom, mm -hmm. as soon as you are called into the kingdom of God, the battles begin. Yes. You have been enlisted and enrolled into the lost army. Yes. And in the lost army, we don't wage war. Even though from the Bible, we read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3, the Bible says, even though we walk in the flesh, come on now, come on. We walk in the flesh. Yes, yes we have been called into the lost army. Uh -huh. Yes, we have been called into the 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 the, 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 the battlefield of the lost kingdom. Mm. Though we are on planet Earth, yes. though we are in Croydon, come on, yes. though we are in the United Kingdom, mm. yet we don't walk in the flesh. Come on, come For on. what? We do not war according to the flesh. flesh. But in the verse 4, but, mm. but, but, for the weapons of our warfare, warfare. for yeah. the weapons of our warfare, warfare, for the gadgets that we use mm. to fight our battles, yes. ah, they are not what? Flesh. They are not physical, mm. they are not carnal, mm. or they are not material. Come on. Uh, we don't use bombs and bullets. We mm. don't use tanks or planes to wage war. Mm. We don't use gossips or backbiting. Hey. We don't use bitterness or envy or strife. Why? Because our weapons are mighty. Mm, come on now. Uh, might, what? Mighty. Might. In mighty. God yeah. for the pulling down of what? Strongholds. That is the nature of our weapon. Yes. And I believe that yes. the scriptures reveals. And this is what I want all of us to know and, and to understand this afternoon. I believe that the scriptures reveals four main weapons of our attack that we, as children of God, we possess. Man. I said, how many weapons does the scriptures reveal to us? How many? Four. Four. Come on, four how many? Four. four. How four. many? Four. four. And these four weapons, if we put them together, they are mightier and stronger than all the ambulations that the armies of the United States possesses. Yes. These four weapons are powerful. Wow. Mm, that's these true. four weapons can fight every battle that you are engaged in. Yes. These four weapons can lead you to your victories. Amen. 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 And these four weapons that I'm talking about are not something that you don't know. You know them already. Come on. Yes. But because you don't see them as weapons hey. for your warfare, mm. you just look down on them and you don't apply them to help you in times of need. Mm. And these five, uh, four weapons I'm talking about are prayer. Prayer. Mm. And one. praise. Praise. Two. And preaching or Pre witnessing. Witnessing. Hey. And your testimony. Testimony. Amen. When you put this for prayer, praise, preaching, or witnessing, and testimony, yes. when you put them together, no demons, no power can stand against you. Mm. Somebody mm. say amen. 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 Somebody say prayer. Prayer. Somebody say praise. Praise. Somebody say preaching. Preaching. Somebody say testimony. Testimony. When we combine all these weapons together, mm. you will always win the battles of life. Amen. Thank you Somebody Lord. say a better amen. Amen. This morning, I must qualify this by saying that prayer is much more the most important weapon that we have as Christians that God has committed to us. Prayer, the ability to communicate with God. Prayer, the ability to come before God. 
when you use these four weapons that I've talked about, at times you can use them as defensive mechanism yes. in the realms of the spirit. But then Paul went a bit further in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, yes. verse 18. And he says that, and pray in the spirit. Yes. He says, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. Uh -huh. Being watchful to this end uh -huh. with all perseverance yes. and supplication for all the saints. Yes. Yes. And pray in the spirit mm. yes. on all occasions yes. with all kinds of prayer. Yes. Now when you apply this particular verse, then you move from defensive to offensive. Yes. When you are praying all kinds of prayer, all kinds of prayer are the kinds of prayer that we have taught you in this church. That is the prayer of praise, the prayer of intercession, the prayer of petition, the prayer of supplication, yes. the prayer of commanding, the prayer of cursing, the prayer of blessing, yes. the prayer of decreeing, the yes. prayer of declaring. Come on now, come These on are now. all types of prayer. Yes. That you and I, we have at our disposal. Yes. And at any occasion and at any situation, when you apply and you identify the situation that you find yourself in, mm. you use these kinds of prayer. Mm. When certain witches and demons are actually tormenting you, mm. that is not the time of you to go and pray petition prayer. Come on now. Come no. on now. You no. must be able to identify mm. yes. your problem mm. and use the kind of prayer that is needed mm. to combat your... Yes. Am That's I talking true. to somebody here? Yes, daddy. There are certain kinds of situations mm. that you don't need to pray a, a prayer of supplication. That's right. There are certain kinds of situation mm. that you have to command. Yes. Yes. Command. 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 Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Command. There are certain kinds of situation mm. that has been embattling you for too long. You command it. And it's gaining root. Mm. And so mm. you take your stand. Come on. Up. And you command. Preach. And you command. Yes. Mountain. Yes. Be removed. Yes. yes. You command. Yes. Come you don't pray over Come it. On. You don't just lament over it. Yes. You yes. don't just yes. cry over it. Come on. Up. But you command. Mm. You take your stand on the word of God. Yes. And you command. You mm. are God. Yes. Yes. There's Come power on. in you. Yes. yes. Mm. You preach it. Uh, all kinds of prayer. Yes, Lord. There are certain kinds of prayer that I know the church, we don't use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. or, or in the New Testament church. Like Praise Gate Temple. We don't use that kind of prayer often. Mm. Or we don't use it at all. Mm. But I'm telling you, it's also effective. Yes. Mm. And I call it the prayer of cursing. Yes. yes. Yes, yes. Preach. We, are, we don't use it. Preach it, daddy. But at times, situation arises. Yes. That Jesus look at the fig tree. Fig tree. Mm. Because right. you have become useless. Mm. Uh huh. Instead of you bearing fruit, you are not bearing fruit. Mm. Mm. And Jesus cursed this fig tree. Cursed it. Mm. My That's goodness. Right. If my Lord could curse just a tree, my goodness, that means there's a need at times. Yes. The certain situation you have to pray and curse that situation. Yes. That affliction, pray and curse that affliction. Yes. Ah, oh, that mm. disease, pray and curse that disease. Yes. Pray and curse the spirit behind every attack that is working against you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. You don't go about cursing people. Mm -hmm. You don't nope. go about cursing your brothers and nope. sisters. Nope. But you curse the spirit behind yes. the situation. Yes. Am I yes. talking to something? Preach. Yes, ah, there are Preach. times that you stand on the word of God. And you make declaration. Yes. Nah, you don't have to pray all the time. Prophesy. You prophesy on situations. Prophesy the word. Declare. Yes. Who you are. Yes. Mm. And take authority. Mm. Yes. I declare Come on the now. devil. I am the son of the most high yes. God. Man. I am more than a conqueror. Come on now. I am Man. a champion. Come on now. I Man. am the beloved child of God. Man. The Lord has inscribed my name Man. in the palm of his hands. Yes. I will Man. not be defeated. Yes. I don't Man. come to you with arms. I don't come to Man. you with bullets. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yes. My enemy, even in the dark, yes. Ah, the light will rise up again.
again. When one door is closer, seven doors will be open. You make a declaration over your situation, and the Lord will show up in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. My goodness, we have something at our disposal. Yes. And when we use them appropriately, yes. when we use them correctly, the Lord will show up in our situation. Amen. We pray all kinds of prayer. And when you pray all kinds of prayer, you are on offensive. Yes. Mm. I mean, you are on offensive. Yes. You don't wait for the enemy to attack you. Yes. You attack the enemy first. Mm. Uh -huh. I like it. Offensive prayer is the attitude of David. Yes. When David was running towards facing Goliath, he as ran. Goliath was standing, the Bible says, David, run. Run towards Run. 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 That is you taking your stand Come on and then facing the enemy. Yes. You are not sitting down That's right. for your sicknesses and diseases to overwhelm you. Mm. You take a stand. A you take a stand yes. and you stand Come on and on. you stand on the word of Come God on on. and make a declaration yes. to that disease. Yes, yes I know. Yes. yes, I know the diagnosis. Uh, but I want you to understand uh, yes. I am healed by the stripes yes. of the most high God. You take your stand and you say to the enemy, yes. my enemy, I will rise up again. Yes, that is the one yes, that Lord. takes a stand yes, and Lord. run and face the enemy. Yes, Lord. yes. Wow. Yes. Goliath was standing, bluffing over King Saul, uh -huh. and he was retreating. Uh -huh. But, but then yeah. David ran towards him. Yes. I want you to understand, prayer is one of the most beautiful. And powerful weapons that you have at your disposal. Because prayer is so beautiful. God does not only expect you to pray, but God welcomes you when you are praying. God does not only expect you to pray, but God expects you. And then he opens his hands and then welcomes you, waiting for you. Yes. There's one thing. It's one thing God welcoming you in prayer, but there's another thing God waiting for you to pray. Amen. Am I saying something here? Yes. yes, God can welcome you. God is always welcoming you, but I want you to understand, church, that the Lord is also waiting for you to pray. Yes. So that when you come before the Lord and you begin to pray, you know that the Lord is very enthusiastic to answer you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 91 verse 15, and the Bible gives it beautifully, it says, you will call on me. The Lord is speaking. He says, you, you, mm. you, yes. you, you, you will call on me. Yes. My son Joseph, you will call on me. Yes. My daughter Mavis, you will call on me. Yes. Oh my goodness, this afternoon, don't sit down and being despondent and see and think that everything is working against you. When Elohim is ready to hear you, he says, you will call upon me and I will answer. And I will be with you in trouble Come and on. I will deliver you hey. and what? Honor him. Honor. That is what motivates me to pray. Yes. Yeah. That is what intrigues me to pray. Mm. My goodness, Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, You will call upon the Lord. He says, Call upon me, and I will answer you and show you great. Great. So God will not show you great and mighty things until, 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 until the Lord will not show the church great and mighty things until. Until yes. the Lord will not show your household great and mighty things. Until daughter of Zion, God will not show you great and mighty things. Until. Mm. Until. Yes. Until you call upon him. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I want you to understand something this morning. That prayer is one of the greatest opportunities that you have as a child of God. When we say an opportunity, how will you define opportunity? I am talking about the effectiveness of prayer. Yes. 
when we say you have an opportunity, I'm, I'm saying that prayer is one of the greatest opportunity that you have yeah. to come into the sight of God, into yeah. the presence of God. Yeah. An opportunity is an occasion. Yeah. Opportunity is an occasion. Yeah. It's the most appropriate or a favorable time or situation that makes it possible to do something that you want to do or you want to have. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Opportunity is an occasion or appropriate or a favorable time. And so prayer time is an appropriate time. A prayer time is a favorable time to get something from Elohim. In other words, prayer time should not be a burden. Morning conference, it should not be a, a burden. Waiting for God should not be a burden. My goodness. We take so pleasure. We can stay on the, on the phone for over one hour chatting about nothing. Oh, my goodness. Castigating and gossiping. But that becomes no burden to anybody. Opportunity to gratify the flesh is not a burden. But when it comes to prayer, opportunity... A favorable time for humanity to engage divinity yes. becomes a burden. Yes. But I want you to understand, as for Praise Gate Temple, prayer time is one of the greatest opportunities that we have as children of God yes. to engage most high God. Amen. If you're the one that I'm talking to you, you will give your loudest amen. amen. Say, my prayer time my is my greatest opportunities. To come before Elohim. My yes. goodness. My yes. goodness. I believe most of the time when a meeting is conveyed and the chairman is talking and one wants to share his or her view, the chairman will look at him and say to him or her, you will have an opportunity to share your views. Yes. In other words, you will have the chance yes. to share your thought. Yes. And that is what prayer is about. Mm. Prayer is not only a time of opportunity for us to engage the Lord Jesus Christ. But prayer is one of the greatest privilege. Mm. One of the greatest. Prayer is not only opportunity time. Opportune time. Prayer is one of the greatest privileges yes, that you have. Yes. What is privilege? Privilege is a special advantage or claim or an entitlement or right or prerogatory or benefit enjoyed by any individual or certain group of people. That is what you have. A privilege, therefore, is a right or an advantage gained either by birth or by special or social position or concession granted unto you. Yes. But you as a child of God, mm. that special concession is granted to you. Yes. Special privilege is given to you. Yes. How? Because of the blood. Hey. I said because of the blood. Yes. You have special privilege. Yes. Because of the blood, yes. you have an advantage. Yes. Because of the blood, hey. you have one privilege over the devil. Because of the blood, yes. you have a step ahead over yes. your enemy. Because of the blood, you have been made righteous. And therefore, we can run into the name of the Lord, hey. which is a strong tower, and we are saved. Hey. Anytime you are praying, you are running into the tower for you to be covered. And therefore, when you don't pray, you are not covered. In the name of Jesus. This morning, I want you to understand. Jesus, Reverend Richard taught us that Jesus never ever actually taught his disciples how to preach. I remember Reverend Richard was teaching us Jesus never taught his disciples how to conduct miracles. Jesus never taught them how to, how to even conduct delivering a uh, deliverance service. Yep. But the only thing that Jesus taught his disciples was he taught them how to pray. Amen. According to Reverend Richard, if I'm lying, then Reverend Richard was lying to us. But that is the truth because that is found in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And the disciples are Jesus. Teach us how to pray. 
Jesus teaches how to pray. Because when we know how to pray, because when we get prayer right, yes. because when we have the attitude of prayer, yes. because when we have the desire to pray, yes. because when we have the heart of prayer, we will be able to conduct deliverance service. We will be able to heal the sick. When we know how to pray, we can pray and ask for our prosperity to yes. come back to us. When we know how to pray, all power will come into our hands. Yes. So the issue is not about the miracles. The issue is about how our ability to pray. Pray. Prayer. Ah, I believe that everyone who seeks to be an effective disciple of Christ should ask and learn how to pray. In Jesus' name. So the question is, I have bragged about prayer. I have said enough about prayer. I have actually tantalized your spirit about prayer. But the thing is, it's not every prayer that gets an answer. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand, from my own little world, I have put down eight conditions for an effectual prayer life. Uh -huh. Eight things that will help you. Eight conditions. Amen. Eight conditions that will help you to have the most effective prayer life. Amen. When you have these conditions, your prayer life will be very effective. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Number one, the first condition that you must have is to have a godly fear. A godly fear. Godly fear. Oh, yesterday, the man of God, my son, Pastor Abel, said something that amazes my spirit during the youth conference. He said that the Pentecostals and the charismatic, uh, Charismatics these days, our attitude towards God stinks. How can you, a child of God, be engaged in prayer, speaking in tongues to God, and yet at the same time, you are WhatsApping your girlfriend or your husband or... Am I talking to somebody here? You are praying. Shaka tolo, mama, 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 and the phone rings. Shaka mama, mama, oh yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I will see you. How? I mean, I, I mean, am I talking to somebody here? Yes, buddy. These are the things that you will never even dream doing them before the queen. God, and, so, and so one of the first conditions that you must have for your prayer life to be effective is that you must have a godly fear towards God. Towards God. When you are approaching God, Know that you are a human being approaching a divine one, awesome God. Yeah. And don't take the presence of God anyhow. Mm. Don't pray to God as if you are talking to Pastor Joseph. God is God. Yes. He's a consuming fire. Come on. He's yes. a judge. Yes. He's a creator. Yes. It's just grace mm. that you and I can come before his presence. Yes. Moses dare not see the face of God. But today, because of the blood, hey. we are able to engage him. Yes. The blood has done something great. Yes. In other words, you must have a reverent submission yes. before God. Yes. The second thing that you must have in order for your prayer to be effective is that you must have faith. 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 Have faith, faith in God. Yes. You cannot pray without faith. You cannot pray without faith. Somebody say faith in God. Faith, faith in God. Yes. Number three, in order for your prayers to be effective, you must pray in the name of Jesus. Come on. Name Not of in any other name. Yes. No other name but the name of Jesus. Yes. No, no in any other name. These days, church members, unconsciously, we are praying to the Lord God in the name of our pastors. In the name of our apostles, in the name of our prophets, in the name of our bishops, I want you to understand the only name that is given among men for men to be saved. The only name that died on the cross is not Pastor Joseph, is not any apostle, is not any bishop. Is the name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Jesus, the son of the most high God. He is the only one that was able to open the scroll and break the seal. That is the name that you must pray through. 
So the third condition is pray only in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number four, in order for your prayers to be effective, you must approach God bodily. Ah. I'm no longer a slave of fear. I am a child of God. You are no longer a slave of fear. And so when you approach God, you approach God what? Boldly. Do you know who you are? Do you know that he purchased you with his blood? Do you know that you are not ordinary? You, you, do you know that God has inscribed your name in the palm of his hands? Do you know that he calls you my beloved? You are the beloved of God? So when you come before God, come before him with what? Boldness. Somebody say boldness. boldness. But we, those of us who know the Lord, there's no more condemnation. We approach the throne room of our father. We walk before yes. to the throne room of our Father with absolute what? confidence and no condemnation. Amen. So the fourth thing that you must have is that when you are going to pray, don't come before God as if you are the sinner of all sinners. Your sins, past, present, and future sin, washed away. That is the reason why I am glad that I'm a Christian. Yes. Yes. I, I don't have to, I don't have to act good and then do some good deeds before I can go to heaven. It has all been paid for. Yes. yes. Preach, preach, oh, preach. All paid for. Thank so that is the fourth condition. Are you enjoying the message? Yes. The fifth thing that you must have when you are going to pray is to have the right motive. Somebody say the right motive. Right. 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 Have the right motive. Yes. Some of us, we pray amiss. James tells us. Uh -huh. I will not go into details. My sons will do that for me during the conference call. Have the right motive. And number six, because of time. Number six, when we are praying, we must. The Lord says we must forgive those that have hurt us. Forgive. We forgive. If you don't forgive and you're holding bitterness, you cannot pray effectively. Am I talking to somebody here? In the name of Jesus, number seven. When you pray, you must be directed by the Spirit of God. Yes. You just don't, yes. just don't use your flesh. Be directed by the Spirit of God. And number eight, and I love it, when you pray, ask According to the word of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a better amen. amen. Somebody say a glorious amen. amen. What do I mean? That when you come before the Lord, you must come before him with a reverent, reverent submission. In the yes. book of Hebrews, Chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, I think it's in the NIV. The Bible says, during the days of Jesus Christ on earth, yes. Jesus offered our prayers. That is Hebrews 5, 7 yes. in the NIV. Yes. Jesus offered up what? Prayers and petition with what? With what? Reverent what? Cries yes. and tears. Yes. With what? Reverent what? Christ yes. and tears. Yes. When we say reverence, reverence means you come before somebody with what? Respect, Respect. and honor. honor. And so Jesus came and as he was praying, he prayed with what? Reverent what? Christ and tears to the one who could save him from death. And who is that one? God the Father. Yes. Jesus prayed to the Father with reverent Christ and tears. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Oh, come on, come on. Am I talking to the whole church? He was heard because of what? His reverent submission. The father heard the prayers of the son because of the 
sons godly fear of reverent submission. This is what I'm talking about. Godly fear of reverent submission by Jesus Christ was expressed in the garden of Gethsemane. You know, when I talk about reverence fear or godly fear or reverence submission, my daughter Abby, I'm not talking about at times some of us, we come before the Lord and then we change the way we talk or speak. You know, Lord, I am unworthy. I am the sinner of all sinners. I don't deserve to be in your presence. In sin did my mother consume, uh, uh, conceived me. Uh, I, I, I am a dirty rag. Uh, I, I am a I... foolish girl. Foolish boy. Are you born again? If you are born again, who tells you you are a dirty rag? If you're born again, who tells you your mother conceived you? What has that got to do with you? You are washed by the blood. Am I talking to somebody here? And so reverent submission does not mean that you come before the Lord uh, be lowering yourself with words, putting yourself down so that God can hear you. No. When you do that, you are actually denying who you are in the Lord. Because ah, God will say, God will ask Jesus, who is that? And Jesus will say, ah, that is my daughter, Abby. And God will say, ah, are you sure? Then Jesus will say, I know, daddy, I know. But then God will say to Jesus, but why is he saying all these things? Who told her that she is unclean? Who told her, I don't deserve your blessings? Who told her, has she forgotten that in you, in your blood, she has got all the blessings has she forgotten that she is seated with you in the heavenly places, far above all principalities? Has she forgotten that she is a royal? Has she forgotten that he is a holy priest? Yes. So, 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 reverent submission does not mean that you come and then allow your words to put you down. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Reverent submission was what was expressed by Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 26. And when we read the verse 39, and the Bible says, And Jesus going a little further. And Jesus going a little further. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup. What was the cup? The crucifixion on the cross. Let this cup pass away from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but as your will. And then in the verse 42, Jesus said the same thing. He said, and again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is your will, let this cup, let this cup, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. In other words, reverence submission is you. Submitting to the will of God. Yes. Am I talking yes. to somebody here? Reverend submission is you submitting to the ways of God. Yes. Submitting to the word of God. Yes. Submitting to the plans of God. Yes. I've seen this young man with wonderful features. You are desiring for this young man. And you come to see your pastor. And your pastor, he has prayed over the situation. He says, my daughter, this is not good for you. Uh -huh. And you still stand on your grounds and you go for this macho. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, God has revealed, you know, if, 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 if mama had followed this, my mama would have made somebody like me. Yes. Amen. 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 Ah, look at that, look at that. Godly fear. <laughs> yeah. Godly fear means Jesus went down on his knees and says, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That is what godly fear is about. Submission. Submission to the leadership of God. Yes. Godly fear means God must have his own way 
at all times in your life, in every situation, you must seek that when your will conflict with the will of God, the will of God must prevail over you because the will of God is always best for you and the will of God can be expressed in your prayers when God will say, wait. That is the will of God. Yes. Wait. wait. When God says, no. That is the will of God. Yes. Take it. When God says, yes. That is the will of God. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. That is what the Bible says Jesus did, and God answered his prayers. In the name of Jesus, I want you to understand. So when we pray for anything, we need to begin by asking ourselves, am I praying for this particular thing because I want it or because God wants me to have it? I want you to ask yourself, am I praying? Because I want this thing or because it is the will of God for me to have it. Uh -huh. Now let me give you a, a case in point scenario and I'll finish. You know, there are certain areas in our lives that we always know that God will have to do it for yeah. us. Especially when we are sick yeah. or when we need financial breakthrough. We always know that it is the will of God to heal us. Yeah. It is always the will of God for us to prosper. Yeah. Because it's in the Bible. Yes. Even in these circumstances and in these instances, we must surely think and ask God, God, is it your will that I be healed? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Paul had an affliction, but he prayed. Thorn in the flesh. Thorn in the flesh and God didn't heal him. No. But God said to him, even in your sickness, my grace is sufficient for you. Timothy had some illness and he didn't get healed. Paul told him, for the sake of your stomach problem, uh, drink a little bit of water. Uh -huh. red, red water. Red water. Red water. <laughs> In other words, take medication. Somebody Thank say, you. Amen. Uh, let me give you one uh, instance, and this is a true story. When I was at the hospital, going through the prostate cancer, which, if it were to be some of you, you would have stopped worshiping God. Mm -hmm. But I remember at the hospital bed, and this is where I got this message from. I said to God, God, and this is the truth. I remember I wrote them down, and I said to God, God, I'm not praying to be healed. Listen to me carefully. This is what I said. I said, Daddy, I'm not praying to be healed because I want to be healed, but because I believe that you want me to be healed. Mm. Do you see the difference? Yes. I said, Lord, I'm not praying because I want to be healed, but I'm praying because I believe that you want me to be healed. Yes. Does, it, does, it, does it sound so sweet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at that time, I know that God loves me. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was the desire for God for me to be healed. Mm -hmm. And so based upon that assurance, I claimed my healing. Yes. That is reverent submission. Yes. Even in that sickness, even in that moment, I did not seek my own. Mm -hmm. I waited on God for God's will to be done even in that difficult times. Reverent submission. I pray that you will enjoy your prayer life as you seek God in that area. Submitting to the will of God, yes. knowing God, loving God. And when you have reverent submission to God, you know that you are before Elohim. And therefore, when you are praying, I don't care whether I'm hurting. I don't care whether my prayers have been answered or not. I don't care about the pains that I go through. I don't care about my physiological pains and experiences and challenges of life. I don't care the size of my bank no, uh, note or bank account. I don't care about what anybody would say to me. I don't care about what even my mind would tell me. I don't care about the accusation of the devil. I don't care about the size of the church. I don't care about anything.
sin. All that I know is that I have a father who loves me. Yes. And so my worship, my worship is genuine. Amen. My worship does not depend upon how I feel. I don't, anytime there was a song and the lyrics of the song, we used to sing it, my daughter Joy. And the song goes like this. Anytime, feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. That's a wrong lyrics. You don't need to feel. Because there are times that you wouldn't feel to pray. There are times that you wouldn't feel even to come to church. There are times even as a pastor, you don't feel like praying. But I don't allow my feelings to detect. Why? Because I'm not moved by what I feel. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. I don't I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by circumstances. But I'm only moved by the word of God. Lift your voice. So let me hear you, come on. God of miracles, signs and wonders, signs and wonders, as we worship, as we worship. You don't sing songs like this and stand straight, you will do it again. Open your heart, open your spirit, lift your hands with me, come on. God of miracles, we are telling him his name. God of miracles, God of signs and wonders. As we sing songs, say, as we worship, he will do it again. He will do it again. And the second part goes this way. He will do it again. He will do it again. As we worship, 
as we worship. He will do it again. He will do it again. Sing it. He will do it again. 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 As we worship you, oh God. As we worship. Take it up. Come on. He will do it again. He will do it again. So, God of miracles, sing it louder, come on, signs and wonders, sing it out to him as we worship, as we worship, he will do it again, sing, he will do it again, he's a God of miracles, God of miracles, he's a God of signs and wonders, and as we lift our voice and worship, as we the last part that goes this way listen miracles signs and wonders miracles signs and wonders as we worship he will do it again miracles signs and wonders miracles signs and wonders oh miracles signs and wonders as we were, uh, you are not living here the same. Sing it again. Miracle signs and wonders. Hey, miracle signs and wonders. Hey, miracle signs and wonders. As we were, He will do it again. He will do it again. Miracle, miracle signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. As we worship, hey, he will sing again. Miracle signs and wonders, yeah, hey, miracle signs and wonders, oh, signs and wonders. As we worship, he will do it again, he will do it again. Miracle signs and wonders, hey, miracle signs and wonders. As we worship, as we worship, He will do it again. So you are here. Come on now. Turning lives around. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Rearrange your destinies. I worship, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Breaking every chain. Breaking every chain. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Sing you are here. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, you, you say, so we make a miracle worker, say, we make a miracle. 
Let me hear the chest sing it. It's you that I see. Sing loud out of center. Oh, Lord Jesus. Out of the center of it all. Oh, oh, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. In this place, we see only you, Jesus. At the center of it all. At the center of it all. 